Bokertov. No, no. Bokertov, today's stuff is Daf Kuf Aleph. And you promise we begin the 12th parak. Okay, now we're going to talk about how the chalitza is actually done. So now we've been talking about who gets the chalitza, how does that work, who does it, when do you do chalitza, when do you, can you do yibam. Now we're going to talk about the chalitza itself. And again, we learned for a four, Shalema for Yosef, Israel, Ben Chaim, Michal, and Eloza, Ben Reuma. Says the mission at the beginning of the parak, Mitzvah Chalitza Bishlosha. The Chalitza has to be done in front of three judges. Three people have to see it. Bishlosha Dayon and three judges. Then he says, even though they're supposed to be judges, which sounds like professional judges, Mumcha, it says, even three laymen are also kosher to do this. Chalitza right. Baminal, Chalitza Sikshera. You do it with a shoe, the Chalitza is kosher. Now, what does he mean by that? Of course, it's supposed to be done with a shoe. It says, it says the Pasik says, uh, if he doesn't want to marry her, and then it says, right, takes off his shoe. So the Mishnah says here, if you did it with a shoe, it's kosher. Sounds like Bidi Eva, the Gemara will talk about that. Really, according to the opinion we'll see on tomorrow's stuff, it's, it's really you're supposed to use a shoe, but there's different kinds of shoes. So we're going to see that the, the uh, Kahati brings down from the Meiri. All shoes are basically okay. Whether it's a shoe, whether it's a sandal, it's okay. The key is that she has to untie the shoe. It can't be a shoe that's uh, what we call uh, a loafer, a shoe that's without straps. It's supposed to, the key is that she has to untie the straps. So it could be a sandal or it could be a shoe. But the, uh, the rabbi said, we'll see in the Gemara, that it's preferable to use a sandal. A sandal is considered something that's got a, it's like hard and it's got a bottom to it in the back, like a heel. And uh, the reason it's preferable to use that is because it, if, it's, if it's broken or torn, it's basically unusable. And we'll see that you're supposed to use a proper shoe that's not torn. And with a, with a regular shoe, which is like a leather shoe, which is a, now means a leather shoe, um, I guess you can't use you know, non-leather shoes. It's got to be a leather shoe, either a sandal, which is hard leather, or a regular soft leather shoe. So either one is really kosher, except the problem with the soft leather shoe is that if it's ripped up or torn, people still wear it, and that's not kosher. Therefore, it's preferable to use a sandal, which, if it's broken or torn, cannot be used. So chotzav and mitol chotzav If you use a regular shoe, it's kosher. It sounds like bidieva, but it's really only because the next word is no good. If it's a shoe made out of cloth, which is basically a sock. If it's a sock, either a thick sock, that's no good. It's not a shoe. The sandal shesh, like if, if it's a sandal that has a back to it, like a heel, then it's kosher. It ain't like a puzzle. If it doesn't have a heel to it, then it's just simply a piece of wood. You're just standing on a piece of wood. It's not really a shoe. It's got to be done, meaning it says she has to take off the shoe. It's got to be where the shoe is resting at least below his knee. What do we mean by that? Let's say the person's an amputee and he's amputated from above the knee. Then you really can't do chalitza there. Stuck, you got a tough situation. We'll talk about that. So I mean our kubal because it says it says Vacholsa Nalo me al raglo from his foot, not from his thigh, not from his arm. Yeah. Well, let's say they're both amputated, right? Which 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 so it's gotta be the right foot as we'll talk about this. I mean, if it's from below the knee, right? Even if the let's say the person's a partial amputee. And uh, the shoe is above his ankle, where his ankle would be. It's okay as long as it's below the knee. And the But if it's from above the knee, it's possible. So what would you do in a case like that? We'll see in the Gemara. Chaltz of a sandal. Let's say he uses a sandal. It says chaltz na'alo, his shoe. What happens if it's not his shoe? Lamaisa. What do the What do they do when there's a case of chalitza? Usually the bezin has their special shoe. They don't. They, you, know, you know, they give it to him. Let's say you know. Uh, it's yours temporarily and give it back to us afterwards because they want to make sure that it's a proper shoe. Uh, you know, I remember years ago, there was a picture in the, there used to be a magazine called the Jewish Observer. I don't know if it's still around from the Aguda in America. It doesn't exist anymore, right? You remember those days? And I remember once on the cover, they had a picture of a chalitza shoe that they use in the, in the Besden. And it looked like what we call today, one of those long boots, you know, with many, many straps on it and going up. They made sure that they had a proper one. There are YouTube videos of, of those things. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there are still today. Yeah, yeah, everything's on. Everything's on the internet. So Chaltzah Basanu Shangel. Let's say he did one that she she removed his shoe 
um, that what didn't belong to him. She moved it that didn't belong to. Even though it says nalo, it's also okay. Obasandal shall eat, so it's made out of wood. Oba shall small be a min, or his left shoe was on his right foot. Chalitzik shera. Even though we just said that it's supposed to be, it says nalo, usually nal means a leather shoe. Uh, but if you use a wooden shoe, a sandal that's made out of wood, that's, that's hard, that's also okay. Because that's also called a shoe. And nalo can refer even to the sandal, as we said, that's even preferable. A sandal usually is, is, is like hard, hard, uh, iron, hard uh, leather, which is not flexible. Well, the same thing would be for a, a made out of wood. Uh, so even if it was le- on his left shoe, you see they had left shoes and right shoes. Sometimes in the olden days, they all looked the same. But it was the one that he normally wore on his left foot, but he put it on his right foot. It's got to be on the right tennis kosher. Let's say the shoe was too big, you know, size, se- several sizes too big, but you could still walk in it. That's okay. Or it didn't, it was too small. He had a small shoe, but it covered most of his foot. That's easier said with a sandal than with a shoe. For shoe, that we most of our shoes, if they're too small, you wouldn't be able to walk in it. But if you ever covered most of his foot, Khalid Sasak Sheer, in all these cases, will say the Khalitza is okay. Except notice it has to be if it's on his, if his left shoe on his right foot, but it's got to be on his right foot, not on his left foot. So the Gemara now is going to deal with the issue of the judges. Since you say that even three laymen, three commoners can serve as the judges for the Khalitza, what do you need judges for? Just say three, any guy, any three guys. Like we do with uh, Taras and Dar, right? It's supposed to go in front of a court. But we take any three Schmendricks who are in shul that day and we use them, right? So what's the point of saying you need three judges, even if they're had Yodas Lamali, at least you need three people who are able to dictate because they have to say certain words. She, he's supposed to say he doesn't want to take her, and she said and she says certain words, as it says in the parsha. So you have to you at least need three people who are educated enough that they can dictate the proper words from the Chumash for the um, for the people to say. In other words, as we'll see, the woman, the Yavama says certain words, she quotes certain things, the Yavam says certain things, and then the Bezan says certain things. So you, you need th- at least three people who are able to dictate. Our Mishnah, which says that you need three Dayanim, is a proof, Tanina, our mission is a proof, it's, it teaches us, this is what we learned in a Brisa, you need, Mitzvah Chalitza has to be with at least three people, three judges, quote, unquote, who are able to uh, dictate Cain Dayanim, like judges, even though they're not real judges. So here we see, Rabbi Yudav says, for the first time we see Rabbi Yudav says, three judges isn't, isn't enough, you need five. So Rabbi Yudav says you need five. We'll see, we'll talk about Rabbi Yudav. My time at the Tanakhama. What's the time account? Where does he get the idea that you need three? If it's not really judges, just need people who can read. So maybe one is also good enough. The Tanya is Kanim, Shnaim, Bain Bes and Shakul. Since it's a Pusik says it's Kanim, right? It says uh, several, it actually says twice Kanim. It says Benikshi, Bento, A love, Laene has Kanim. That's in Pusik Tess and Parakhafe in, in uh, Dvarim. So it says Kanim, Kanim is two, minimal, uh, minimal, a minimum of a plural, minimum is two. Since you can't have a, an even amount of judges, because then you could have a tie, or you know, a, a, a uh, you won't have an, you could have, uh, you can have like a locked, uh, a locked uh, uh, court where you know, they can't uh, make a decision, right? So and Pardon? Hung jury. hung jury, like a hung court, right? A hung jury. Well, usually by a jury, maybe by a judge, by a court. You're also going to be a hung. Uh, Hung court, Bain Bez and Shuckle, some Osifan Aleim Odech, you had one more. That's how the Tanakhama gets three. Rabbi Yudah, how does Rabbi Yudah get five? He says, Zikne Shnaim. Oh, the Pasik said in the Pasik Chesses, for Karolo Zikne Iro. So that's Zikne, that's two. He says, I don't want to take her. The Niksha Yvimto, a love. The Yavama comes near him, laying his skin in front of his cane. So you have two words. Two to two for two psukim. One is ziknei that shnaim. Kainim is shnaim. That's two plus two is four. Ben bezin shakul. Since you can't have an even amount, most even lay more. You get one more harei kanhe. So that's how Rabbi Yudah says you need five. He says you need five. We'll see at the end. You don't need five. But Rabbi Yudah says at this point you need five. The Tanakama high ziknei avad like. So what does the Tanakama do in pasuk ches where it says ziknei iro, which Rabbi Yudah says that adds two more 
What does he do with the word Zikanim? Oh, Zikanim would indicate you have to have three proper judges, right? Or two plus one is three. Zikne tells you even more than that. You know, to, to add on, you don't have to really be proper Zikanim. It's like an extra word teaching you something extra. Zikanim itself would mean you need three proper professional judges. Now that he says Zikne, it's an extra word to teach you. They don't have to be professional, even, even. Pardon? They don't define the age. No, well, he, they don't define the age, right? There's no, uh, there's no, it's a, it's a zuck in here is Misha Kanachachma, person who's wise. It doesn't depend on the age. Ethne of our mitzvah, of course, but uh, th there's no, uh, they don't have to retire to a certain age like the Levim that we're discussing in the Chumash now that we read the Barshas. They have to work till 50 and then they can't do the work an anymore. There's no, uh, there's no limit. They don't have to retire. There's no retirement age. Yeah. But yeah, they, um, there are certain, there are certain jobs today in the government, right? That in the governments that are, there's no retirement age. They just work until it's forever, right? I think in the Supreme Court here in Israel, they have to retire at 70, I don't know. But uh, but most, many, many jobs, there's no retirement age at all. <clears throat> Certainly in a lot of Jewish institutions, there's no retirement age. So, Rabbi Yuda, Rabbi Yuda, So, okay, so, so if, if you're Rosh Hedyotas, Rabbi Yuda, Hedyotas, how does he know they could be hediotos? In other words, we just said that the Tanakama, what does he do with zikne? He says they could even be commoners or laymen, people who are not professional judges. Rabbi Yudah, though, who said zikne is to add two more, how does he know it could be hediotos? So the Gemara first says, nafkele mi le'ene. And the Pasuk says, where does it say? Le'ene haskenim. V'nik sha'ivim to elav le'ene haskenim. She will approach them in front of the skenim. V'chol sanalo, in front of the skenim, she takes off his shoe. So, Manoah, how does he know? How, how does that word teach you that it can be a Yotas? Because we have a price which says, Laene means the, the judges have to see. That means that if they are blind, if one of them is blind, he's excluded from being such a judge. Since you need Laene to exclude blind people, you see from over here that the judges can even be laymen. These like the Sanhedrin. If you have to be proper judges, like in a Sanhedrin, professional judges being them, what do you have to exclude? What do you need a puzzle to exclude blind people? We already know that blind people cannot be professional judges. From Rabbi Yosef's drasha, the Tanner of Yosef, just like the judges in the Besan have to be righteous people, they are clean righteously, spiritually. They also have to be clean of any blemish. They can't be blemished. You, my my uh, beloved one, you're all pretty. Umum ein bach. You're beautiful. Umum, there's no, there are no blemishes. So in other words, the judges, like in the Sanhedrin, or the proper judges in a court of three, a court of 23, a court of 71, have to be without a blemish if they are professional judges. So the fact that I have a pasuk indicating le'ene, excluding blind people, shows that these are not professional judges. If there'd be professional judges like Mumchan, they, they, they would be disqualified anyway for being blind. Because of because of Yosef's Russia. So since I have a post to to exclude blind people, that shows me we're talking about non-professional judges. Okay, so it's the drusha that's learned out. That's what really good. Oh, you're, he's referring to the uh, to the courts, right? It's learned out from It's learned out that we're talking about that, right? I will um that's what we're talking about. Because that's speaking about Moshe Rabbein says, no, that's the drusha that we're speaking that it's referring to judges. The Edach. Okay, fine. So it, according to Rabbi Yehuda says, he says, La'ine excludes professional judges because I wouldn't need, since it excludes blind people, obviously we're talking about non-professional judges. If they'd be professional, if they're required to be professional judges, they'd anyway be excluded because they were blind. So since I have a Pusik saying that they can't be blind, we're talking about laymen. So what is what is the Tanakh What does he do with Ene? Uh, he already excludes Zikne, tells him that they have to be professionals. So what is does I name? So over there she spits. You know, make people think of she spits in his face. She spits in front of him, doesn't really spit in his face. But the judges have to be able to see the spit. And we'll talk about if the spit is colored or discolored. We'll talk about all these things in his parrot. So they have to see the rock the They have to see the spit that comes out of her mouth. 
in front of the eye in, in front of the eyes of the skatem the yarka. She has to spit in front of their eyes. That's what he's laying it for. So if you say uh, so, Rabbi Yudah also needs Laine uh, to teach me that Russia that they have to be able to see. It's You're right. So how does Rabbi Yudah know that they can be even laymen if he doesn't use if he doesn't have Laine for that? And Zikne uses to add two more people to add two more judges. How does he know they could be laymen? Nafka me be Israel. Oh, because the pasuk says be Israel. Lokdom uh, shame achiv be Israel. Be Israel in in the uh, Jewish people. Israel called to this be Israel referring. He's saying it's referring to the judges, right? They they, they say they say that lokdom um, shame uh, achiv be Israel. And it says later on also v'nikra shmo be Israel based on and it's in the court. The court could be any any court, any uh, any Jew, any group of Jews is good enough, and that's referring to the court. He be the chai be Israel my overlay. Okay, so that's what you know. So what is uh, if you say that um, he, he doesn't have he, he does have any love from Israel. So the Tanakhama, what's he going to do with Israel? My Let me boil the Kaftan of Shmuel Bar Yehuda. And this is Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda. As we'll see later on, Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda himself was a gear. So it says there, be Israel. It says the Kaftan of Shmuel Bar Yehuda. Be Israel, but Bezin Shal Israel, but Bezin Shal Gerim. Ah, Be Israel means it's got to be a Jewish court, a court that the judges are all non gayrum There's a non gayrum They're all they have to be they have to be regular Jews. Not gayrum. We'll see what happens if just the uh, if just the mother is right. If just the mother is Jewish, but they can't be a court of gayrum That's be Israel means that the court that 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 uh, supervises the chalitza or that uh, sanctions it that uh, that qualifies it uh, proves it um, is um, uh, it has to be a court of Yisrael, not of Gerim. Uh, so how will the other hold, will hold that? Well, we're going to say Yisrael Achrinik. So there's two Yisraels here. If you look in the Pesukim, it says Lachim Shem Lachim Yisrael in Pasuk Zayin and in Pasuk um, in Pasuk Yud. It also says Menikim Shem Yisrael Beis Chol Zanah. So it says the second Yisrael. So the other one, what is he going to do with uh, with the second Yisrael? If I look at a time of Yud, a Pamachas that you know Yosham Terav Tarfim. It was once we were sitting in front of Tafim, Boy Yibamalach, let's see, Yibam came for Chalitz in front of us, and he said to us, Anu Kulchem Chalotz Anol. Because it says, Minikur Shavi Yisrael, Beis Chalotz Anol. And Yisrael should call Beis Chalotz Anol. So you should also say, uh, you should all answer, Chalutz Anol, Beis Chalutz Anol, that the, uh, the house in which the shoe was removed. The Edech Mivinikra, oh, the other one who doesn't, what does he do? He used the second B Israel. To teach me what one that has to be a court of Israel, and the other one that it's got to be um, uh, that, that 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 it's got to be uh, lay, that can even be layman. Give me one Israel to me layman. Second Israel to teach me that it's got to be a court of Jews, not Gerim. So how will he know this business that you have to call it out? And then the Gemara doesn't give till what is the other one going to say? That Benikri probably doesn't dash. Okay, so that this gives us the psukim. Basically, how Rav Yudah comes out, Rav Yudah says he need five because he has he learned Zikne. The Chum don't learn Zikne for that. They use it to teach me layman. How will he know layman? He'll learn that out from Yisrael. They'll use Yisrael for a different Russian back and forth, as we said. So now we're saying like this. According to the Tanakhama, why do you need a quarter of three? Because it says Kanim, which is two, which is two. Really, Rashi points out it says Kanim twice because it says, uh, and then later on it says, So he says that is what we're learning it from. It's just referring to the scanim that it says before, so he doesn't dash the scanim twice. Nobody says, Zik, it says, it's really, if you look at the psukim, it says once, Haskanim, it says, Zikne, and then it says, Lene Haskanim. So if you, nobody dashes them all, you know, both scanim is two plus two plus one. Nobody says that. Um, because the second scanim is referring to the first one, so he doesn't dash that. But besides that, if you're saying that the reason we say you need three as opposed to one, why don't you just have one judge? Why do you say you need three? Or Rav Yudah says you need five, because he darshan, the Tanakhama darshan is Kanan, which is two, and can't be even, so you add another one. And Rav Yudah darshan Zikne and Kanan, that's four, but you add another one. So if you're darshan that way, says Gemara Elameata, the Karu Shnayim. Why don't you say it says also, the post says the Karu, right? I'm going to Israel. They will call to him. They'll say, "Listen, what's going on over here?" The woman says, uh, "You don't want to. You want to marry her." Why don't you say, "That's also two. They will call him. 
Oh, not Bakar Shnaim, and Vidibru Shnaim. It says Bakaru Lo Zikne Iro, Vidibru, and they will speak to him. Bakaru is too, they, they will call him and they will speak to him. Achanami, so Rabiura Hare Khan Tisha, according to Rabiura, should be nine, because you have Ziknes, Kanim, Karu, Vidibru. That's eight, two, 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 two. And then one more, it should, should, shouldn't be even, should have an, an odd number. That should be nine, Rabbana, Hare Khan Shiva. According to Rabbana, instead of three, there should be seven. So we boil it like that. No, that the koru the dibru is for a different drasha. Drasha the following price. The koru lo below shluchim. Number one, they have to say it. They can't call. They can't assign other people to koru lo to call them. As they can't uh, send a bailiff to call them to court. But rather the koru lo below shluchim. The dibru elov and they will speak to him. What does it mean? The dibru elov. Not simply saying we understand that you don't want to perform nidim over here, uh, that you want to you, you don't want to marry her, so you have to proceed here with the chalitza uh, the chalitza process. Malamit shemasinlo eitzah gas It just means that they talk to him, they can they um, advise him. Malamit shemasinlo eitzah gas. They give him a proper advice, uh, proper counsel. Shem uh, who yell at these kind of. Let's say he's a young man. He's 13, 15, 20, and she's you know. 56, these Kena, or who's Zuck and Vialda? It could be that he's 80 and she's 20. Omlo, we tell him, Malach Eitzel Yalda, what do you have to do with this young girl? Malach Eitzel's Kena, what are you going to go with an older woman? If, the, if it's not a good shidduch, because they're not, it's similar ages, right? Yeah, Kalach Eitzel Shemus. talking about the, somebody marrying his grandmother. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Forbidden. Those were like the, the Goyim, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, that says, we're Americans. So we all know that a wedding, if an 80 year old marries a 20 year old, you know, there might be other reasons uh, than, than to have a nice marriage, right? Uh, uh, that, that, that's not going to work out. So, pick somebody like yourself. Don't, don't bring uh, fighting and disharmony into your, into your house. Meaning, of course, you know, if there's going to be tension, that's not going to work out. It's not going to be. So that's what it means with a Car means they have to call themselves, and Vidibu means that they should properly give give them proper counseling and tell them, listen, even though it's a mitzvah to form Yibam, but you know, if it's gonna work out like this, it's not gonna, you're not, it's not gonna have a happy ending. So av- avoid that and do the chalitza. Amar Rav Nachman. What's the halacha? So we have a machlokas here where the chalitza is with three people or five. By the way, it, if you have pro- professional judges, that's even all the better, all the better. But even, it could even be layman. So the Tanakhama says you need three, or Vita says you need five. Amr Rav Nachman, Allah, the Allah is Chalitza Bishlosha. The Chalitza, right? Pol Basasam Tanakhabasa, even though the Tanakhama is usually Rav Meir, but if it says it anonymously, it's called the Stam Mishnah. So here is another proof where even though you see what in our Mishnah, it's a Stam Mishnah. With this opinion that you need five, we say we have three people, but the Mishnah Stam. Mishnah is an anonymous Mishnah. Rabbi's opinion is not brought down. That's a question whether if you have two opinions in the Mishnah, one is anonymous and one is is uh, is authored, right? We know we know who it is. Is the is the one that's not the is the uh, anonymous author? Is that considered Stam Mishnah? But so we'll, we'll talk about that. But but the uh, Mishnah here is a Stam Mishnah says three. So since it's a Stam Mishnah says three, that's the Allah. That's the case. Mi or Nami. Mian should also have, be required three. What is Mian? We've learned many times. Mian, not like the Mian we talked yesterday about the end of yesterday stuff, that where the condition was all tonight. And if the Kedai wasn't fulfilled, even if they're both adults, uh, she can walk away from it because the condition was not, was annulled effectively, never took place. The regular Mian that we talk about is a girl who was married, Mitra Her father married her already at once, Mitra or he died now. And now, She's eight years old, nine years old. She's uh, um, her, her, she's the, the, her mother or brothers want to marry her off simply so she shouldn't be, um, uh, uh, you know, un, unchaperoned, that she shouldn't be uh, just uh, free in the streets and people will take advantage of her. So if people wanted to marry off young girls that the husband should take care of her. So this that's not a real marriage menator and she can walk away from it at, when, she, when she's about to reach 12 years old. And she could just walk away, but it's got to be in front of a court. So if that's the case, maybe because you say that that uh, chalitza needs three because it's a stam mishnah, so mian should also need three. It's not a mian b'chalitza bishlosh. It's a mishnah that they're going to send her mian or chalitza need three, and so that should also need. So maybe a mian taka needs three. 
Ivatanya me and Beshami Omar and Bezdin Mumchen. You need proper professional judges. Beisol Omar Bezdin, Shlo Bezdin could be Bezdin without a Bezdin. Eilvel Marim Shesar of Shloshim. Everybody says you need three. So here also it's a Stam Mishnah, right? Uh, if, if you say you need three, uh, what happened by the time you learn? And and the uh, Stam Mishnah said Chalit uh, says three. Beishamai says you need Mumchen. Beisol says Mumchen or not Mumchen. Bezdin or Shlo Bezdin. But the mode three. Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Yosi, these two rabbis say, Machshim Mishnah, even two is good enough. I'm Rabbi Yosi, from a Yom, I'm not one. Allah calls us, Allah is it, I mean, you only need two. So if you're saying what, by, by Chalitza, you need three because it's a Stam Mishnah. So by me and also, you should need three because we have a Stam Mishnah in Sanhedrin which says, I'm Yom, I'm And yet we have a Bryce which says that the Allah is, even though Beisel Mishamai say you need three, Beisel says, that's not the Mumchen. Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Yosef, these two rabbis say two, and Rabbi Yosef, when you said the Lachas two is good enough. So how could you say, why do you say Chalitza? You need three because it's a Stam Mishnah. Mian should also, Mian is also a Stam Mishnah, and, uh, and, yet it's, and yet we don't take that as a Halacha. The answer is, Hosam Chad Stamma. There it's only one Stam Mishnah that says Mian, because the Mian Chalitza was supposed to be getting a Sanhedrin. Here we have two Stam Mishnahs, our Mishnah. Which says Mrs. Chalitza with the three, and that mission is Sanhedrin because it says Hamiyun Bachalitza Bishlosha. So we have two Stam Mishnahs. Two Stam Mishnahs, we go with the Halacha. One Stam Mishnah, not so much. Umar is going to talk about, it's going gonna, gonna to discount that in a minute. Yeah. What is the spark for needing three? What would be the reason for it? For where? By Miyun? By Miyun? By Miyun? No, by Chalitza. By Chalitza is based on a puzzle we just, not a svar. Yeah, but, but we also have a day that says you need two. No, not by chalitza. By chalitza, you need three. Talk about the meal. It's not a court case. Right, right. By meal. So you're saying you're adding on, even if you have a puzzle, you're right. adding on one because you can't have two. Right, right. They're being shakul. Right, right. right. But why? We're not talking about the decision. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No. They're it, like Aiden. Right, right. They're like Aiden, but it, but they have to. They have to talk to him. They have to different opinion. Yes. You know. Yeah. Right. But, but it's like a court. Like a court. Because it's called skatum, so it's called so it's still it's still it's still like a court because it's called skatum. So because of that, we have a rule of courts. You have to know the halacha, etc., etc. Questions could come up, and you need to you need. It's not like a psak din that there's a lit, two not litigants, not. but it's like it's like that. Same thing with the vows. You know, maybe when we make an adar, right? Why do you need three? Because maybe two will say well, it is yeah, a good, one say not. You no, know, but either way, whether the effect you need mumchum is based also on a on a, on a pasuk, right? Either because it says zikne or because it says this or that. That's what you learn out. But basically, you need a quarter of three. A quarter is always three. A quarter is usually a quarter of three. Now, there are cases where one mumcha is good enough, right? One quarter is enough because that's all. Also, because since he's a mumcha, he functions as a court. But it's basically learned out of sukkum. And and we don't want. And if it's one guy, then you don't have to worry about a difference of opinion or a hung court, right? It's not a and you don't have to worry about it. But if, but, if, but if you say, if you say based on a POSIC that you need a minimum of two, then you need another third one, so it shouldn't be shuckle. There could be a disagreement whether it's kosher or not kosher, so you can have a fight about it, so you need, you need, a, uh, you need an odd amount. So the, the question over here is, if you say the chalitza needs three psak halacha, why? Because we have a stam mishnah, and you don't need, you don't need uh, five, like Rabbi said, you need three, so why by why by me and don't you also need three because we have a stam mission that says you need three and 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 yet and you say so maybe that is the case no we pass and even two is good enough the answer is that by uh, me and you only have one stam mission here we have two so the gemara says hasanami trace stam by me and there's also two stam missions which says you need three the tanan me and oshachotz the fun of yisa and of neishu besin we had this mission back in yevamos and daf chafei. What do we say over there? That let's say, um, let's say <coughs> she re- she had me in, in front of me and Oshachotz of a front of the Senate. Can he marry her? In other words, let's say you did me in with one mumcha. Let's just say you had one person performed the me or the chalitza. So one there's one one judge there. He shouldn't marry her because he's no gabbat of her. Meaning he says, okay, is this me and kosher or not? He says, yeah, it's kosher. It's a kosher me in. Is he sure it's me? Maybe she's not 12. Maybe this kosher questions came up. Is it valid? Is it not valid? Well, he shouldn't marry herself, the judge, because it looks like he's just allowing the meon to take place of the chalitza so he can marry her. But let's say he did, uh, let's say um, she did meon in front of him and he's part of a court, a court of three. 
then it's okay because it's not just him. It's not just his word. You have two other guys there. So me and Rosh Hashanah, we send him Neshi who bezin because it's a bezin. So what do you see that the chalitz of the mean is is three? So there's also two. It's also a stam mishnah. So we see me and was also stam. Why do we pass that me and two is good enough? Why? Right. After all, if chalitz of the reason why you need three is because that's a stam mishnah. Me and also you have two stam mishnahs. Both. Uh, the Mishnah in beginning of Sanhedrin and the Mishnah here on Daf Chafe in Yavamas. El Ahasam Trey Stami Hachat Plus Stami. The answer is here, there, there's two. Here, there's three. How do you have three? The Mishnah we learned today, the beginning of this parak. The Mishnah quoted in Sanhedrin, the Tanami and Bachalitza Bishlosha. And then you have the Mishnah we quoted back here on Daf Yavamas and, and Yavamas Daf Chafe. You just said Mir Shachalts of Afanov. If she did me and Achalitza in front of this judge, he himself could marry her because he's part of a bezin. It's not like he's doing it on. It doesn't look like uh, uh, that uh, he's no gay abadavar. Here there's three stams. So three stams we go with, two not. Says Gemara, come on. What are you just adding up stam issues here? Michti hostam of hostam. Both both by chalitza and by miyun. You see that a stam mishnah says you need three. Mali chad stam, mali tre stam, mali tosa. What's the difference if it's one, two, or three? Either way, the stam mishnah says you need three. And and therefore. By me and also she need three. Elam Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak all the stam the all the the stam the makom achlokes. You know why you need three over here? Not because it's a stam mishnah. The truth is, it's not. Some cases the stam mishnah does not give the psak. For example, like the case of Mian, we said by Mian we have a, two stam mishnahs which say you need three, and yet the psak, the psak is like that zug that says that two is good enough. Two is good enough, Michael, like Michael says, because even though it's not as much, because you don't really need it, you just need to make sure that she, she walked away from it, right? The stamka, uh, but the reason why we say over here that Allah is that, that you need three for chalitza as opposed to five is because it's a stam where there's a machlok. So what do you mean by that? It's not. In the same Mishnah, in, in the beginning of Saturday, it says, smichas kenim, right? That this kenim put their hands on it. That's with three, the egla rufa and the egla rufa. Is Bishlosha, Divir Rabyosi, Rabyosi, that's Rabyosi, you need three of you, Romer, but Hamish, Rabyosi says over there, no, Smicha Skanem and Egla Rufa is five. And then the Mishnah goes on, Ha Chalitza Vamiyuna and Bishlosha. Chalitza and Mina is three, but La Pog Rabyuda. In other words, if Rabyuda really stayed with his opinion, he need five, it should mention it over there. There, Mish Rabyuda is mentioned, and he disagrees by Egla Rufa and Smicha Skanem about whether you need three or five. He says, no, five. When it says Chalitza Miyun in three, below Polyg Rabbiuta Shvam, you know, Hodavi Rabbiuta Shvam, and Asis, your Rabbiuta attracted his opinion. The reason why we say you need three over here, and that's the Psach Halacha, said Rava. The Halacha is the three, that the Chalitza is only three, because even though we had this whole Gemara about the Psukim, how does Rabbiuta learn out five? He retracted his opinion at the end. Well, how do we know that? Because in Sanhedrin, the beginning there, it says, for Smichas Ken Regular Rufa, you need three. Rabbiuta says you need five. And then it says Chalitza in the same Mishnah, Chalitza Miyun, and only three, and Rabbiuta doesn't disagree there. So you see that he retracted his opinion. The Dayanim have to set a place. They just can't say, oh, you want to do Chalitza? Come here over here. Come on, we're, we're, we're here anyway. Come on in here. We'll, we'll do it. No, they have to set a place for it. They have to designate a proper space, a, 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 a place to do it. They'll come up to the gate, meaning a specific Ellis Canaan. There has to be a specific spot for it. It doesn't have to be a fancy spot. It doesn't have to be a fancy court with, uh, you know, with wooden benches and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and signs just has to be a spot that they designate. They actually did a chalitza with five people. Says the man, come on, you like Rabbiuda. We already just proved that Rabbiuda retracted his opinion. Y'all, you need three. The Pasuma Milsa, they just wanted to publicize it so that for two reasons. Number one, that she's a chalitza, so a coin shouldn't marry her. And just the opposite, to say she's available. Anybody got a sheikh for her right now? If you're not a coin, please step forward. Rabashi Ikla of Abay Rafkani went to Rafkana Omerlay. Rafkana told them, Salik come, Kosalik Malikaman, please approach us so we can have five people. Not necessarily that you need five like the halacha, that the halacha is eating five, but simply for a person we like you said. I'm Rafkana. Have a community commander of Abbas in front of Omerlay told me, Ta, come, Sak, Lazirs of Kana, come up to this bundle of reeds, let's the roof of Echamisha, so that you could. Uh, you can uh, join us for a group of five. In other words, you join us, so we'll have a group of five. Amalo, they told him, I was in front of right, yeah, I was in front of you. Amalo, Lomali Chamisha. So uh, so they told him, what do you need? Um, uh, Amalo, they, uh, they, he told him, or they told him, what do you need? Five. 
Uh, again, just for publicity, but for the halacha is three would be good enough to perform the chalitza. Rav Shmuel by Yehuda, what's the Yerusa? El Farsa Milsa. Am Rav Shmuel by Yehuda. Shmuel, we mentioned him before. Shmuel Yehuda said that you can't have a court of gayer when it comes to chalitza because it says be Yisrael. So, so the story goes like this. Am Rav Shmuel by Yehuda. Koi Kamed Rav Yehuda. I was in front of Rav Yehuda. I was in front of Rav Yehuda. It says, notice it says Amr of Shmuel Bar Yehuda. His father wasn't even a rabbi because he himself was a Rabbi Yehuda was also Yehuda was a gear. So he so Rav Shmuel he was in front of Rav Yehuda and the Amora. Amr Lay told him, Sak, come, uh, Sak, go up, ta, come, Lazirza, come, come up on this um, on this uh, uh, bundle of reeves that we designated as a place for doing Khalid. So let's through Pichamisha so you could join a group of five. The Prasuma Milsa, because we want to advertise it. In other words, we already have three, but we want to advertise so come Amr Lay. He told them, the Tanina be Yisrael, the Bezim Yisrael, it's got to be the Bezim Yisrael, Bezim Shalkerim. Even though he grew, it was a group of five and you only needed three, but if you were in the five, you had to be a proper judge. And he says, when the Pusik says, be Yisrael, and I am not a Bezim Yisrael, but I'm not a Ger, and I'm a Ger. I can, even though you're only, you're, you're only adding two more to pursue Menisa, but they still have to be, you know, you're not just saying, you're not just telling two guys, you know, we want a group of five, we want a group of five judges. And the judges, even though they don't have to be professionals, but they have to be uh, uh, proper judges in the sense they have to be Jews, not Gairim, and I'm a Gair. I'm Rav Yudah Kagon, Rav Shmuel Bar Yudah. This, Rav Yudah says, ah, oh, you know, he, he, what did he do? He recused himself. He says, please join us so we could have five judges over here. Not that you need five for the Chalitz, but you need five for Pursumi uh, Nisa, for Pursumi Milsa, not Nisa, for Pursumi Milsa. And Rav Shmuel Bar Yudah says, well, I, I'm, I can't uh, be a judge here because I am a Gair. Uh, Rashi says him and his father were Megayer. So Rav Yudah, who saw how honest he was, said, oh, I would even withdraw money from one person to another based on his word because he's so trustworthy. He says, more, you could actually take out money. You say that you need to aid him, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, matrimonial issues, uh, women issues, or whether you need money. You need to. Even, even the greatest Sadik Moshe Rabbeinu cannot take out money based on one. Ella Marana Shtara Apume. I would impair a star. If somebody has an IOU and he says, listen, I know that that star is no good, I would impair that I would disqualify that star based on his reason. Not that he would actually take money out, but he would say the star is no good based on that. Yom Rava. Ger Danas Chavero Din Torah. A Ger could even be a judge for another Ger, even in a halach, even a question of Dene Nefashos. Dene Nefashos. Afil Chol Yisrael, as we said, I called Chem because Mishnah says in Sanhedrin, everybody's kosher to be a judge, even a gear. So here he says that uh, when it comes to um, uh, capital cases where a where a gear could not judge a Jew, but he could judge his fellow gear. Shnema, some tasam alech a melech, asherif chesham alech a bo mi kerev achecha tasam alech among your brothers should make a melech. And Rashi explains that melech here refers even to a judge. Daim b'chal melech to siv melech by mishpat yamet aretz. So we say over here when it talks about the here, where it says Melch refers even to judges, and also because it says many some some times come as be among your brothers. So some zach Melch Alecha Alecha would be among your brothers. On you, doesn't Melch Melch on you, the Jews? You have to have somebody who's not who's among you, meaning not a ger. Avol ger donos chaveiro ger, but a ger could even judge his friend, his uh, fellow ger. Um, it, it, that's okay. If his mother was Jewish, even his father, Dana feel Israel. But for Chalitza, you need you need both father and mother to be Jews, not them. So he asked me because he says Menikshmok be Israel. Be Israel means among the Jewish people, Mashmashe Israel because it's got to be Jewish on all sides. And we said Nikkush Reis refers to the judges. So Be Israel means that for so for Chalitza you need judges who are both, even though they could be commoner, they could be laymen, but they have to be total Jews. Both their father and mother had to be Jews, not Gerim. In other words, they could be a second generation, but they had to be more. They had to be Jews, not Gerim. Uh, that's for Chalitza, but for uh, a Ger judging another Ger, even if his mother is Israel. Uh, then he could even in Israel, Israel, he could even judge Israel. So it's an interesting thing that for a capital case, a ger is no good. But if his mother is Jewish, that's good enough. But for chalitza, you need you need that that the, you need the judges to be total Jews, meaning neither neither mother nor father could have been a ger, even though the chalitza is obviously not something as severe 
as a capital case. That's what we learned out of the Pesukim. All right, we'll, father, pick, him, we'll pick him Jewish, tomorrow. He's not a gear. His father, no, right, he's not a gear. Yeah, right, but I'm saying, but if his gear. father is a gear, but if his father is a gear, but he's not good enough to be Chalitza, because Chalitza says be Yisrael, so he has to have father and mother have to be non gayrim but for, uh, but for other cases, you're right. If his mother's Jewish, he's considered a Jew and he's not considered a gear. Right? But it says five. So why, if, if, if three are kosher Jews, mm -hmm. right. and, and two are gear, why, why wouldn't that work? You only need but, three for the, for the Dayan and you only need three. Right, right. But here, but, but here we're saying, only for, for well, well, no, but for Sumisi, you could have the people in the audience also are there. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. there. No, but it's a, it's a proper. It's only a, it's it's more of a, uh, a publicity if you had five judges. So the judges have to be proper judges, even though technically, even if they didn't if they didn't do it for presuma, if they didn't do it to publicize it, three judges would be good enough. But just to say, add two uh, guys in the street or two women or two people who aren't uh, proper judges or witnesses is not going to be. You might say, well, that's good enough. Just have a lot. Just have a big crowd of the audience. They'll also publicize it that way. But it's better if you had five judges, that'll publicize it more. That's what it's Israel. Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh.